Mr. Gomez. I thank you. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the witnesses here today. Um, Ms. Foster, we've heard a great deal about, uh, gee, it's my body, it's my choice. Uh, but the same people that said that seem to feel like uh, if it comes to a vaccination, it's not your body and it's not your choice. We get to tell you whether you have vaccinations or not, regardless of what the risks are. Um, do you believe people have the right to choose what happens to their own bodies? I believe in protecting every human being, no matter who they are, where they are, um, any other aspect about them. Um, whatever you call that is is what I'm for, and that absolutely includes human beings in the womb. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Um, you're familiar with the law. Uh, state and federal law does not recognize a child's um, uh, being mature enough to enter in legally binding contracts so that normally it is a parent that is required to make decisions in the best interest of the child's body, uh, correct? Uh, correct, yes. So uh, you've obviously been working in pro-life movement for a long time. Um, do you think it's an appropriate presumption that a parent will choose to do what's in the best interest of a baby's own body since they can't make the choice for themselves? Absolutely. We should be protecting every human being. But do you see, um, you believe there should be a presumption that a parent will make a decision for the best interest of the child's body? Yes. Um, you know, we, we've seen lots of problems. We've heard a testimony about the mental duress of carrying a child. And of course, I'm sure you're aware of what's called postpartum depression. Uh, some have it very severely. And I'm wondering if a mother is suffering severe depression as a result of having a child that she's not mentally and physically able to take care of. Uh, do you believe that a mother should have the right like to drown a child, to get rid of the child because of the mental stress and duress and problems that the mother is having? Of course not. That would be horrifying, and that's why we have safe haven laws to provide um, support and resources and an outlet for women in difficult situations. But from what you've said already, you seem to feel like uh, uh, the child's body does belong to the child but relies on the parent to make decisions for the child's best well-being, correct? Uh, I... I trust that, that people are, are looking out for the best interest of all human beings and are, are supporting you, their right to life. Well, are you familiar with uh, premature babies, pre preemies? Uh, of course, yes. Yeah. Uh, do you find that it seems they have an inherent desire to live? Absolutely. You know, when yeah. you when you visit a NICU, you see them fighting for their for their ability to live for, yeah, for every and breath. And that's a good term, fighting for their ability to live. Um, from our own daughter that was born eight to ten weeks prematurely, uh, we were sent to a higher level ICU, neonatal ICU, because they had a higher survival rate and when I got there my wife had to stay at the hospital where she had been uh, and encouraged me to go do anything I could but I began to see why the survival rate was so high there because the doctor said you got to sit down right here that baby can't see you properly but she knows your voice you stroke her little face her hands 
She grabbed the end of my finger and I couldn't move for eight hours because she, as the doctor said, she's drawing strength, she's drawing life from you. The gentleman's time That's has expired. the role of a parent. I thank you for your being here. Uh, Mr. Cohen.